Hi everybody, welcome back to the garden. Well, it's the third week going on to the fourth week of July and the garden is coming along really nicely. A lot of, um, a lot of harvests already. I've been eating peas, beans, zucchini, herbs, uh, uh, green beans, peas. Did I mention that? Um, what else? Oh, lettuce, of course. Uh, broccoli. A few berries, so stuff like that, but uh, we're really hitting the peak right now. So a lot of tomatoes. Well, I got my first um, small cherry tomato a couple of days ago, and there's a few more that are about to ripen. So the tomatoes are going to start coming on um, probably daily, shortly, where I'll be getting some ripe stuff every day, um, and I need to start processing that. But uh, this is sort of the period where I'll be harvesting stuff and then trans or replanting some of these beds so the potatoes this bed of potatoes right behind me here the plants are dying back so those potatoes are ready to harvest and then i've got another row of potatoes that i see they're starting to wilt too so it'll be short um, shortly that they're ready as well um, that bed is more storage potatoes long term and this is uh, red potatoes that don't store as well but they taste better so I'm gonna to have to preserve. Um, my challenge is that without refrigeration or reliable refrigeration, that I need to do things like dehydrating and uh, canning mainly for long-term preservation until I get the root cellar finished or built and uh, get the solar, new solar system installed that gives me more power so that I can actually put in a small freezer that I will use until the ice house is ready and I can get enough ice stored inside um, sawdust inside the building in the cellar so that I can store my fr uh, frozen goods in there like meat um, for this from this fall's harvest or uh, game harvest. So the garden continues to take up a lot of my time. Um, it's been a funny year because I haven't been um, building as much on the homestead as far as buildings and I've been behind on getting that workshop started and the chicken coop and stuff mainly because the garden is taking a lot of my time but self-reliance i mean to me the the number one things in self-reliance after shelter which i've spent three years establishing on the homestead the next things would be water food and energy and that's what this year is all about is getting food system established getting the water system um, more secure so give, getting that uh, pond dug has made a significant improvement in the livability of the homestead of the, of the cabin property. And um, in the future, I may have to dig a well as well, uh, depending on how, well, we'll see, depending on how much water the garden demands and stuff in, in different, uh, different years, different weather patterns and stuff. Anyway, because this has taken so much of my time, I don't want any of it to go to waste for one thing, and I want to start preserving some food for the winter. So, I can't eat all of this, my family and I can't eat all of it. So I need to do that. Potatoes will be eaten mostly fresh this year. I think next year I'll spend more time growing a much larger potato bed of storage potatoes. Potatoes that will last half the winter or more in the, in the underground cellar. So what I'm doing today is I'm gonna dig up these potatoes here out of this bed, get them on a drying rack so they get a, a hard um, sur uh, exterior on them so that they last longer and then i'll put some compost into this bed and then put some wood chips on get that bed prepared and then i'll you know, figure out what i'm going to plant into it so it's sort of succession planting time so planting a new bed of different crops that will fill in that space that can be harvested just before winter sets in so i gotta look at the number of days i've got predicted to the last frost which is probably about 75 days ish or less so i'm gonna make sure i put stuff in here that that will mature before that date or that can withstand a little bit of a frost at that point. So I'll pull that, uh, reestablish that bed. Um, that potato bed, I'll probably wait till next week. The peas are almost done. So I'll probably, um, well, I'll let those die in the vine. Then I'll use those either, either as dried peas for the winter to, to eat in soups and stuff or as seed crop for next year. So make sure I'll have a balance of, of both of those things. Um, what else? Zucchini. I need to harvest some of this zucchini and some of those plants got damaged in the high winds and rain we had last week. So I'll take out the plants that are too damaged and replace them with something else. 
It's a busy time in the garden, busy, always busy in the garden. So the plan here is to get these beds built up in fertility and then get them covered over with a good layer of, of uh, bark and, and especially wood chips as a mulch. I don't like being enslaved by the garden and having to weed and stuff all the time so, and water. So it's essential to get a really thick cover of mulch on that to keep the moisture in and to provide uh, nutrients and to keep the weeds down. So that's the plan to rent a chipper and get as much of the branches chipped as possible so I can get full coverage in here by, uh, by probably next year, I would say. Full mulch coverage. So let's get at these, uh, at these potatoes. So my main pests this year have been caterpillars that have been destroying a lot of the crop. These little guys here have had tons of these little caterpillars and, and the white ones. And they're eating everything, it seems, flowers included. So I'm trying to control those as much as possible. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve potatoes from one that, that one plant. So normally you'd want to do this on a cloudy day because the um, sun on the potatoes can actually turn them green and they become toxic. So something you try to avoid. That's why you always store them in a cool, dark place. So I can't leave them on the garden. Normally you just put them up on top of the soil for a couple of days and let the skin harden, kind of cure it. But uh, in this case, what I'll have to do is take them into a sheet area, maybe in the forest kitchen, put them on a little drying rack and let them harden there. And then, uh, and put them under the floor in the cabin to store them. I'll eat these fairly quickly though. These won't be ones we store for the winter. But it was a good test, a good trial. Try the potatoes out in this soil, see how they perform and I'm happy with them. So next year I'll do a lot more potatoes. A lot more storage potatoes especially. Probably could have left them longer for some of these small potatoes to grow into bigger ones, but anyway, this, like I said, it's more of a trial this year, and then I still have my other potato bed that I'll leave right till the very end. That's a good plant there. But I do want this bed to get the next crop going too. So I want to make sure that I get all of the potatoes out of the garden because they will sprout next year. And what I'm trying to do is make sure I rotate these beds so I don't build up a, a disease in the soil. So by rotating the crops, you get something different into this bed so that the pests and diseases that prey on potato plants can't feed the next year or for the next two or three years in the same bed so they die off. So I'll have to keep rotating the crop that way. But you leave these little tiny potatoes in here, they will sprout and then it gives the disease or pest something to live on. So ideally you want to get this bed completely clean of nightshades. So you want to get this bed completely free of potatoes so that uh, another crop can go in here not only grow using the um, different nutrients and the, the potatoes would have depleted the soil of and but also to get to to break the pest cycle so they have no incentive to breed in this bed and create more of the disease or the or the bug it's a really good harvest considering I wasn't sure anything was going to grow in this soil Although potatoes are pretty reliable in this acidic soil. So it's really acid here, which is not good for a lot of vegetables, but it is really good for potatoes. In fact, the potatoes do really poorly in alkaline soil. 
so I'm lucky that I can at least grow lots of starch, lots of carbohydrates, because that's something that's hard to harvest from nature. Not a huge abundance of carbohydrate sources up in this latitude and altitude up here in Canada. See all the roots though? Tons of roots in the soil. So that needs to break down, decompose, and be replaced with some other plant and root. This turning is not, well, it's nice because this is fresh, a new bed, and I'm trying to establish good bed with, beds with good soil. So the uh, turning of this soil, I don't normally do that with other crops. I like the, back, the uh, ecosystem underground to, to develop. And by doing this, you break that up. But like I said, it's important to get these potatoes out in this case, root vegetables you have to dig anyway into the soil to harvest them. So you may as well treat that bed like a deep bed with loose, rich soil and take the opportunity once it's once I'm doing this to enrich this soil. So I'll add some compost back in here before I plant the next crop. I'm trying to dig deep underneath too so that I don't damage the potatoes as I'm lifting them because Every potato that's scarred is one that won't last as long, so they're the first ones that I'll eat. So based on what I said earlier about the pests and the disease is building up in the soy, you might wonder why I'm composting this rather than burning it. Well, the reason is I didn't see any, any indication of, of disease in these potatoes, so I don't need to burn and eradicate any benefits along with any potential diseases, but I also wouldn't just compost normally. So this is a uh, thermophilic compost pile. So it's gonna be big enough that it'll heat up enough that it actually kills most of the disease and stuff. So that's uh, why I add everything to this pile. So I've got my food scraps in here. Also lots of whey from my wife's cheese making, which has a lot of enzymes in it and a lot of acid but anyway it kind of charges up the pile and it ends up being quite a hot compost pile like when I put this if I turn this over on camera in a week or so you'll see that it's really steaming hot like it's hot enough that it actually sterilizes almost the uh, the soil so that's that's what I'm doing here turning all this compost over and uh, creating a really rich organic soil for next year for this fall to put on the garden some of the finished stuff I'm going to put into that bed right now though the finished compost so it's been a really hot summer so far this year much hotter than average the average temperature in this part of uh, where I live part of Ontario Canada 25 degrees would be the typical high temperature and it's been closer to 30 for at least three weeks now. Today is like 100% humidity. It's so hot and humid. It's like Florida weather. And I know everybody's experiencing it this year in this, uh, on the eastern seaboard from, from south to north. Well, I think even central North America. I think everybody's experiencing this heat. Um, but yeah, for me, <laughs> preferring winter to find it uh, almost unbearable, almost impossible to work in it. So sun hasn't really completely cleared the trees here. So I'm gonna get some of this gardening done and then I'm not even gonna work on anything today. I'm actually, we're gonna go out on the uh, canoe and kayak and uh, take Callie out on the water and I'll do some fishing. It's good fishing weather, stable weather and hot weather for pike fishing and maybe bass but not so good well really bad for trout fishing so i really concentrate on the warm weather species of fish at this time here so hopefully it's not too windy to get out enough on the water that i can actually film if it's stable enough safe enough so i can show you uh, what i catch today too anyway breathing heavy because it's not overly hard work but i'm just so overheated right now yeah this stuff's breaking down pretty good 
So I will get some of this really well composted stuff into that bed and figure out what I'm planting there. I think since this was an early one, what I'll do is actually use it for seed for next year. It's nice getting these, um, collecting seed from the plants that do the best. So this one was one of the ones I put in last. I kind of just threw it in the mound because I didn't have a place for it. And this mound is, uh, I, haven't, I haven't even, this is not the final planting for this mound. I plant on perennials in here. So this um, has done so well that it's a good, strong plant, obviously, that, I, that would be good for seed production. So I will leave that one on and take some of these slightly smaller ones. Oh, okay, that's enough gardening for today. I'm not built for this heat. I'm going out on the water, so I'm gonna put, uh, I'm not sure if I'm turning the video off now. If so, then thanks for uh, spending the day with me, the morning at least, uh, harvesting and maintaining the garden. Um, I'm gonna get out on the water and see if I can catch some fish to go with this food for dinner and some to uh, preserve as well. Usually I can get a few pike and that's good for several meals. So let's go do that, or like I said, if that's is it, then uh, thanks for watching. And I look forward to seeing you back at the garden or the cabin or the pond later or another time. <laughs> Take care.